Microsoft buying Bethesda? Motherfucker, talking shit about Bethesda gets my skin glowing in the morning. Like, I don't give a crap about Bethesda games. Crap about Bethesda games. <laughs> We are gathered here today to acknowledge a monumentous occasion. After the never-ending slander I have shown towards Bethesda and the games they have released that would make an ant farm crown Fallout 76 as their new queen with how astronomically buggy their games are known to be, hell has truly frozen over. Pigs are flying and my ass cheek has just been pinched to signal this is not a dream. In January 2023, the Xbox and Bethesda Developer Direct was held to showcase upcoming games being released for the first half of 2023 from the green gaming giant one of these games being presented by tango gameworks the studio renowned for the evil within and ghostwire tokyo during tango's segment they introduced a game that was neither a horror game nor a horror game that involves japan as its aesthetic instead it's a 3d cell shaded game that hits the good old joss whedon movie cliche lines that's me and you're probably wondering how I ended up here. Corny opening aside, the trailer showcased more of what the game has to offer. And when I found out it's a rhythm based hack and slash game, I was left curious until Tango also stated the game would be releasing the same day as its reveal. Shadow dropping the game with a $30 price tag led to my curiosity peaking higher than my microphone. I decided why not take a gamble and try it? I have tried the game. I have played the game. I have finished the game. Now, I will review the game. Let's start the new year on a harmonious note with the first review of 2023 dedicated to Hi-Fi Rush. Hi-Fi Rush begins with our protagonist named Chai, a young man with a broken arm who dreams to be a rock star. Traveling to Vandalay Industries, Chai applies and is accepted into a special program labeled Project Armstrong, where his dreams can become one step closer to becoming reality by having his arm replaced with cybernetic enhancements. Little does Chai know, he seems to be more suitable in Vandalay's eyes as a janitor. After Chai steps into the machine to begin the process, Kale Vandalay, douchey air with amazing hair to Vandalay Industries, notices the machines detects Chai lack luster qualities and deems Chai to be an epic fail of a candidate, chucking Chai's music player over the railing, but not before it lands on Chai's chest. Now with an iPad for a heart and a private playlist full of nothing but Adele songs, Chai can feel the rhythm of everything around him as he searches for an escape from Project Armstrong's facilities. During his escape from Vandalay's base, however, he is assisted by a robot cat controlled by a girl named Peppermint. Recruiting Chai to help her investigate a conspiracy, the duo discovers an AI program called Spectra. Designed for mind controlling, this Vandalay approved cybernetic implant's purpose is to control consumers because making people like things in order to make money is hard and cost ineffective. We have a budget to uphold to, people. Chop, chop. Chai and Peppermint decide to put a stop to Spectra by acquiring the past keys from each Vandalay executive with more allies joining them in their quest. This game may come across as cheesy since around the time of its release, there was somewhat of a discussion surrounding games containing questionable writing where the protagonist obnoxiously states out loud certain events or actions that just took place in front of them that we all witnessed and undermines the intellect of the audience in the most condescending way possible. AKA Will Smith and Suicide Squad. What, we some kind of Suicide Squad? However, Hi-Fi Rush quickly destroys that impression no more than 20 minutes into the game. The game does not take itself serious whatsoever and centers its narrative and theme around how technology can be used for evil and corporations exploiting their workers. Has this trope been done before? Yes. At this point though, one should know that despite the amount of media that also points out the evils of bureaucracy, it's how the execution makes it enjoyable and distinguishable from its peers. Hi-Fi Rush exceeds in delivering on that fright. It plays into satirical elements in having robots replacing human workers, yet still expressing human-like emotions as they are overworked and underpaid to the most extremes due to their artificial state of being. Along with numerous anime references like this boss right here, 
appear that JoJo poses at the speed of five star platinums, in addition to various video game and pop culture references, some of which I recognized right off the bat, and some of them I didn't. And even an Evil Within reference to poke fun back at Tango themselves, the humor refuses to fall short in Hi-Fi Rush. And how easy going it is with having a decent story that is tackled from a more humorous approach. Its moments of seriousness tends to stem from the characters developing the relationship with Chai, allowing for this group of random assorted ragtag Vandalay ex-employees to become a lovable gang that you can't help but cheer for. This is the section I am so excited to talk about when it comes to Hi-Fi Rush. The gameplay runs the usual with hack and slash games with featuring puzzles, combos, grandiose boss fights, and a ranking system to make you self-aware that you suck. <laughs> but you can always do better. Unfortunately, you can't change Chai's weapon in the game. Instead, you can change the look of it via a customization system you unlock after completing it that will ensure you look like a rock star just as much as you feel like a rock star. The highlight of the game is, well, the game itself is music. Taking a step beyond being another run of the mill hack and slash, Hi-Fi Rush's uniqueness is that it's not a hack and slash with some rhythm to it. Everything about this game is designed to move to the beat of the game's soundtrack. And I mean everything. Chai's run. Oh my goodness, he even runs to the music. Chai's dash, Chai's idle animation, enemy attacks, the cutscenes, even the actual stages themselves. Selves. Now the game can be played above 60 hertz, but you are recommended 60 hertz, I believe, to avoid latency troubles. The game doesn't stop there, however, after completing the story. There is post-game content to complete, as well as a new difficulty mode unlocked known as Rhythm Master, where in this mode, if your rhythm rank isn't above a C rank at any point in time in the chapter, you receive an automatic game over. Speaking of attacks, let's take a full measure to address the combat system. With hack and slash components at its core, Hi-Fi Rush is cousins with his fellow games within this genre, which should be no surprise since hack and slash games are actually nothing new to Tango's founder and Hi-Fi Rush's executive producer, Shinji Mikami. With his game developing roots starting at Capcom and notable for the iconic Resident Evil series, Mikami has worked on a number of iconic Capcom titles such as Devil May Cry, Beautiful Joe, Onimusha, so it's no surprise that for a new IP, Hi-Fi Rush swings with all the full force of a well-polished hack and slash. Notable hack and slash components can be found in this game, which are a combo list, a health meter, and a special meter that can be upgraded to increase survivability, a list of special moves that can be equipped and used interchangeably in battle, dodging and parrying, and by extension, two distinct offset dodge moves, one that assists in starting a ground combo, and the other an air combo. In addition, there's a magnetic like lasso that closes the gap, especially for these hand cannon bastards that love to run away. Now you can change weapons because what kind of rock star? fights without a guitar. However, you can use Peppermint, Macaron, and Corsica as assist characters to keep your combo hits intact and use their unique abilities to deal with special enemy types. Peppermint's guns are ideal for aerial and shield type enemies, Macaron is best to break armor type enemies, and Corsica's staff unleashes wind attacks that will temporarily stun enemies. If you find the stun duration too short, not to worry. Your assist character's unique attacks can be upgraded via collecting blueprint chips and attaching them onto the chip slots to buff Chai. Purchasing additional chip slots will cost a hefty amount of gears, which is the currency for this game, but of course it's best to upgrade and equip perks that fit perfectly into your preferred play style. Now I know in some reviews I do discuss music and sometimes I don't. This is because I've noticed in a lot of games either my enjoyment of the game occupies my attention more than the music or while the music is there is usually muffled by the other audio elements like dialogue and sound effect which weakens his presence. Fortunately, when you have a game like Hi-Fi Rush, music is impossible to ignore. I was under the impression that there was a supposed Michael Jackson song in this game, and that's what I get for trusting the internet. But when I looked at the list, yeah, it makes sense for a game where the protagonist wants to be a rock star to have rock bands featured. The soundtrack licenses songs from actual bands, some of them more well-known like Nine Inch Nails and The Black Keys. If you are like me, and you cannot pay off a lawyer to fight DMCA claims and copyright strikes, there is a streamer mode feature that replaces the licensed songs with original music made in-house by Bethesda, which honestly is also really, really good. 
Now, I can't end a review without addressing any issues that popped up while playing a game. I can happily say there wasn't any technical issues, no bugs, nor any glitches while playing the game. However, I do have one small critique for Hi-Fi Rush. You see, when I said it earlier that the game itself is music, I was not exaggerating. Everything about the game is on beat, which includes traversing across the levels. The platforming in this game also requires for you to be in tune with the game's rhythm as moving in time platforms also have a pattern. The aerial movement from point A to point B with Chai is stiff at times and I was surprised that the game didn't implement a super dash upgrade. As Chai is, some of the levels did feel sluggish at times to travel through. Granted, Chai runs to the beat of the music in eighth notes, but I think it would have been cool to include a super dash just as rhythmic, like 16th notes, which are double the speed of eighth notes. Perhaps it was thought of during its development and upon execution, the animation might have looked weird or odd, so they decided to scrap it. I can still confidently say that though that this critique is not necessarily a deal breaker. We have arrived at the coda of this review. The age old question must be answered to play or not to play. It comes to no one's surprise that I highly recommend playing Hi-Fi Rush. Although this game is a rhythm based hack and slash, which gives a great appeal to players who may enjoy one of the two genres separate from each other, Hi-Fi Rush is an all around gem that doesn't particularly lack in any other departments to where if rhythm games or hack and slash games aren't up your alley, the game itself is a well made product that I did not expect to be this impressed about given the few other first party title games I've played around the end of 2022 that left me disappointed in varying degrees and also the barrier to play this game is once again a mere $30 which for a $30 game once again satisfied me and entertained me more than the last four first party title games from other consoles I played that were double its price. As someone who has grew up with almost every gaming console making its way into my home some way or another it has been a long time since the Xbox 360 days where I've owned an Xbox console and just as long since the last time I found myself interested in playing a Microsoft exclusive that wasn't pew pew or vroom vroom games. Hi-Fi Rush also marks the first time I ever gained interest in wanting to play a Bethesda game. And I have to say, it makes me happy to see Hi-Fi Rush prove my expectations wrong, which is a lesson we all can take from this, including me. It's fine to try things you've never tried before, regardless of whether you enjoyed it or hated it. To know for sure and to have gained the memory of experiencing something new is better than staying complacent and allowing that complacency to fester so annoyingly bad that it eventually morphs into boomer levels of obstinacy. After all, memories are what makes life worth living, and Hi-Fi Rush has certainly become a game worth remembering for this year of gaming. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.